Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our beautiful partner Mars and specifically about a new study that suggests that there's a high possibility that Mars may have had its oceans for a very very long time allowing it to potentially even have life before Earth. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And our story starts in the early solar system, basically 4.5 billion years ago. This is when uh, the entire solar system was still very active, there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things collided with each other, and a lot of this is uh, quite visible in uh, the signs we see both on the moon and on planets like Mercury, where the entire surface is essentially covered with these ancient craters from roughly around 4.5 to maybe 4 billion years ago. We often refer to this period as the late heavy bombardment when a lot of um, remainders of the solar system eventually made their way to the surface of various planets and collided with them. And we believe that this period lasted uh, for quite a long time until about 3.8 billion years ago when it suddenly stopped. And this is when our planet Earth was finally able to establish a permanent uh, and quite stable atmosphere have liquid water and life started developing on planet Earth as well. And today we believe that something similar happened on Mars, with Mars eventually getting very large oceans that disappeared roughly around 3.7 billion years ago. Although the actual date is still being debated and we're not going to know for sure until we go there and study the actual rocks of, of Mars. So um, what about the collisions though? And even though we know that Mercury and Earth experienced late heavy bombardment and obviously Moon did as well, it seems that we may have been wrong about Mars experiencing it as well. As a matter of fact, this paper right here argues very thoroughly that Mars did not experience so-called late heavy bombardment, in other words it didn't really have any large asteroid collisions that could have done this, that could have collided with the planet and strip it of any kind of liquid water on the surface, eventually turning the planet uninhabitable for a while. So how do we know this and why is it that the scientists now believe that it didn't really experience this and may have had liquid water? Well, even though we don't have actual Martian rocks that we brought from Mars, we do have a lot of Martian meteorites that made it here to Earth from various collisions that Mars experienced previously. Specifically, there is a few of them we've discovered in the Sahara Desert that may have arrived to Earth around 5 million years ago. Here's an example of this meteorite that we've discovered there, and we believe it came to Earth after Mars experienced a smaller collision somewhere on its southern hemisphere. And these rocks have been very thoroughly studied and um, very interestingly, we've discovered a lot of things that we don't expect to find in rocks here on Earth. Now usually the geologists when they study rocks they are really excited to find these types of rocks known as zircon. These zircon crystals allow us to very thoroughly study the age of the rocks and also find out if they've undergone any kind of catastrophic events like for example sudden changes in temperature. And an asteroid like this with zircon crystals in it can even tell us if the actual rock or if the environment around the rock experienced any kind of a shock like for example a sudden pressure change, temperature change and so on. And because this is an asteroid that um, was created by a collision, we do see these signs um, roughly around 5 million years ago in most of these rocks, suggesting that the actual asteroid collision happened around that time. But except for that collision event, there seems to be nothing else present inside the rocks, as if no other major um, cataclysmic event or collision or sudden pressure change or sudden temperature change occurred on Mars in the last four and a half billion years since its creation. In other words, it's as if there was no other collision during the late heavy bombardment that Mars has received. Now we know Mars may have received at least one major collision, uh, specifically, let me just demonstrate this by showing you how it may have happened. Uh, it may have received a collision to its northern pole because we know that Mars is slightly more flattened in the north here than it is um, in the south. And also at the same time the northern part of Mars is much lower than the southern part, as if something squished it from the top. 
But except for that particular collision, there may have been nothing else. In other words, Mars have been spared by this event that bombarded the Moon, the Earth, Mercury and probably Venus. So we don't really know why, but we believe that because of this, Mars may have had stable conditions with a lot of liquid water on the surface much longer than we previously believed. Which obviously suggests that there is a very, very high chance of Mars having established oceans and atmosphere much earlier than we previously thought. And the scientists behind this paper believe that by about 4.2 billion years ago, Mars already had these really stable conditions with atmosphere, relatively nice temperature and of course liquid water. And this of course also means that these conditions existed for roughly around 700 million years in total. And by the time that Mars basically got bombarded by the solar particles and lost all of its atmosphere and all of its water, by then it may have already established some sort of primitive life. Because it actually took much less than 700 million years to establish first life here on Earth. As a matter of fact, um, following the late heavy bombardment, the life established really quickly, within about 100 million years. And 700 million years would be enough for um, these really early bacteria to even start evolving into something more complex. So all of this suggests that life may have evolved on Mars pretty early on, earlier than Earth, may have established there, and for all we know, may still either be there or may have left signs of some sorts, we need to go and discover and find out more about it. Because there's also a chance that Martian life that was established there early possibly came to Earth as well. Through the same means that we get those Martian asteroids on the planet. Basically by experiencing a collision that would send meteorites that would then come to our planet. This is what we refer to as panspermia. Now obviously this is a huge speculation, but the chance of having life here earlier than Earth is pretty high, assuming this paper is correct. And considering the fact that today scientists are almost certain Mars definitely had very large oceans and very thick atmosphere and was very Earth-like back in the days, and of course assuming the fact that this paper now extends this date dramatically, allowing Mars to have these uh, beautiful oceans for up to about 700 million years, all of this changes the game completely. This means that someone needs to call Elon Musk and tell him to fuel up those rockets. It's time for us to go to Mars to either find that life or find the signs of first life in the solar system. Because for all we know, it's still hiding somewhere out there and maybe, just maybe, it's somehow related to us as well. Well, anyway, let's see what these scientists discover in the next few years and hopefully we'll make it to Mars in the next 10 years so we can possibly even find it there somewhere beneath the dangerous radioactive rocks that Mars has on its surface today. Once we discover something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, but for now that's it. Thank you for watching, hopefully now you know a little bit more about Mars and how life may have evolved in the early solar system, and if you'd like to learn more about the paper, it's in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, like this video, share this with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to know more about science, space and universe and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.